So we have a data science tutorial. We are going to be talking about one of the most important tools in product and marketing data science, especially in the causal inference track, and that is geo-based experimentation. Rather than doing simple user level randomization, in this case, we are going to randomize geographies. And so every geography that's in a control group, all the users in there will be control users, all the users in a treatment geo, all of them will be treated, tre treated users. There are a couple of reasons that we use this tool. One of the most common is due to sattva violations or when there are network effects where the treatment ends up affecting the control group. So in an experiment, the control group is supposed to represent how the treatment group would have done if not for the treatment. And so to do that, the treatment, it has to be the case that it doesn't affect the control group at all. So here's an example of a sub violation where the treatment and the control group are trending together. And then the treatment happens. We see the treated group goes up, but the control group also goes way down. So let's talk about an example of what could cause something like that. Imagine a scenario where we're looking at ride share drivers and riders. And the proposed treatment is we're going to create this new algorithm in the app and we're going to give it to riders that will match them with better drivers. So we split the users into treatment and control. We have three treated users, three control users, and a set of six drivers. Now, before the treatment gets implemented, uh, we expect that the treated group and the control group should be about the same. And in this case, uh, each group they get two out of three good drivers and one bad driver. So they get the same treatment before the treatment actually happens. Sorry, the same outcome before we implement this treatment. Now imagine that we give the treatment, this new algorithm, only to the treated users. So they are able to get better drivers faster. Well, all three of the riders in the treatment group are matched to better riders, but the treated group riders and the control group riders are competing over the same drivers. And so there's now fewer good drivers left for the control users. In fact, there's only one good driver left for the three controls. So they end up getting two bad drivers and it worsens their average experience. So if we go back to this graph, if we were measuring, let's say riders, average rider satisfaction, the treatment group should go up because now all of them are getting good drivers, but the control group is also going to go down because now they're getting worse drivers. And in an experiment, we would measure the differences between the groups and it would be so large. But what would happen if we pushed out the treatment to everyone and both the good, the treatment group and the control group users both had the same algorithm? Well, we go back to right where it was before where they're both getting the same mix of good and bad drivers and really the treatment effect should be basically nothing. And so to get around this, we use a technique called cluster randomization. In this case, the clusters would be metro areas. So for example, if New York is one of the treated metro areas, then all the riders in New York would get this new algorithm. But if San Francisco was one of the control metro areas and one of the control clusters, then all of the users would also be control users. They would not get that algorithm. And then we would look and see how does, let's say, average user satisfaction in the treatment regions in these treatment metro areas compare to the average rider satisfaction in these control metro areas. So besides this ride share, there are a number of other cases where you could use, I mean, there's so many, but just some examples are offline marketing campaigns. If there are billboards on the side of the mall or in the subway system, right? Like we can't randomize what people get to walk past the mall or get to walk past Times Square and see this billboard. So we probably do geo-based randomization. Another example would be in the public policy space. What if there's after school tutoring? tutoring? You know, so now if you wanted to try randomizing students within a school with say tutoring programs, well, those students who receive the tutoring may end up helping out their friends who don't receive the tutoring. And in this case, it would actually be the opposite of what we saw in the graph here. You might have the treatment group go up, but the control group might share the wealth and, and go up too. And you would actually get a much smaller estimated effect than what it would be. So, but it would also be biased. 
Now, there's no free lunch. There's always a trade-off when it comes to these different uh, methods. And here, it, it, one of the, the some of the bad things are there is a relatively much smaller sample. So the precision might be more difficult to get statistical power. The results might also be dominated by a few very large metro areas, such as New York, LA, or San Francisco. And actually, when you choose your randomization strategy, you might need to stratify to make sure that your top few markets don't all randomly uh, get into the top, into one treatment arm or the control arm. And, you know, because you're doing this to an entire metro area, you might end up like watering down some of the effects as well.